you know, here's me at 14, so excited to go to this incredible school and, and have one of the best musical educations in the world. And, and instead, I was abused and raped and threatened. And I eventually had to leave a full scholarship school at age 17 because I had to get out of there. I'm Lara St. John. I'm a classical violinist. I was abused at 14 by my violin teacher. I was accepted at the Curtis Institute of Music in Philadelphia when I was 13 years old. It's actually a college and it's a full scholarship school, so one is on so-called probation the entire time. My brother was also at that school and we had the same teacher and that teacher used my brother as leverage against me to get me to do things. His name was Yasha Brodsky um, and he was 78 years old, I was 14 and he threatened me with kicking my brother out of the school as well as myself unless I acquiesced to what he wanted me to do, which included sexual abuse and eventually rape. I think the school was much more interested in itself as an institution than it was in the welfare of its students of any kind. They repeatedly swept this under the carpet. I think actually that the aftermath and the fallout is worse than the bomb. It was worse for me to tell people what happened to me, almost, than it was what happened to me. I think sometimes, especially classical music, it's considered sort of the, the, the height of, of art and Western intellectualism and humanity. So for people to know that there is this vicious underbelly to it, um, I think is actually even more shocking than, say, for example, Wall Street or the tech industries. It actually is quite easy for predatorial people to take advantage of young students because teachers are put on this godlike pedestal and also a lot of the teaching is one-on-one. -on -one. I spend uh, pretty much half the time on the road. Uh, most of my work is uh, concerto and, uh, and recital. I also am very lucky that I continued in my profession. Um, a lot of uh, fellow survivors that I know have left music because of that. I hope in 2020 the Me Too movement accelerates exponentially because I think that's kind of what's been happening, you know, from 2017, 18, 19. And I hope more and more women are able to band together and, and some men and just put an end to this abuse. In schools and in all walks of life, abuse is very, very common and justice is not. And for me, I'll never get justice because the man who raped me at when I was 14 continued teaching for another 11 years until he died. And he died happily in his bed. And I don't want that for other women. I want them to be able to see justice.